Zero Bird was an evolutionary marvel, hatched from a warm nest, a direct descendant of the dinosaurs, but with a razor sharp beak. A killing tool more dangerous than that of any known predator today. But this perfect predator was not perfect enough to survive. And when we look at the tools in its arsenal, the mystery only deepens. For at the time, food is abundant. And the three top predators are all chasing the same thing. Dinner. However, success comes down to who executes the most efficient pursuit and who can hold on to it. Then and now, prey are so adept at eluding capture that 50% of all pursuits end unsuccessfully. Some predators, like wolves, rely on their ability to sustain a long chase. A pursuit predator, like a wolf, is one that just simply tries to run its prey to exhaustion. 50, 60, 70 miles at one time. For wolves, success depends on working well with others. Wolves are social hunters, and the pack would go in, attack, and retreat with multiple animals uh, working simultaneously. Hunting in a pack enables the wolves to bring down prey much larger than themselves. Unlike wolves, big cats don't depend on stamina. They rely on stealth to ambush their prey. They seek out a location where other animals tend to congregate, like a watering hole. The cat would come to the pond, lake, whatever, and conceal himself or herself in the grass nearby and simply wait extremely patiently, as we know cats can do. A saber tooth waits so long for its prey, it catnaps. And it often hears its prey before seeing it. The element of surprise enables the cat to stalk and attack without warning. But the terror bird is a much more versatile hunter. It can stage a sudden ambush or endure a long pursuit like a wolf. The stamina for running long distances is encoded in its DNA. Birds have amazing respiratory systems. They have air sacs all throughout the body, and they have this great ability to extract oxygen from the air. I mean, if you think about, you know, migrating birds, birds that'll fly thousands of miles at a time, they have to be able to supply oxygen to their flight muscles that whole time. An exceptional lung capacity is also found in ground birds such as ostriches. They are some of the fastest of all animals, reaching speeds of up to 65 kilometers per hour. Also, from the neck down, the physique of the ostrich is strikingly similar to that of the terror bird. Running animals tend to have the muscle mass concentrated near the hip, so there would be big thigh muscles. But then as we move past the knee, down to the ankle, and to the foot, there won't be very much meat there. There'll be relatively little muscle. However, 
Ostriches are not predators and their heads are small, weighing less than half a kilogram. The head of a terror bird, by contrast, weighs more than nine kilograms. But it's what's attached that is the final X factor and what made the terror bird such an effective killer. And later, for the first time in two million years, we'll show just how the terror bird attacked. With the help of special effects designer Rudy Machinga, paleontologist Eric Snively is going to duplicate the mechanics of this strike. So it wants to strike down as powerfully as it can, drive the beak into flesh, and then get away. If it has to, it'll strike again and again. From his work with modern raptors, Eric knows the point where the shoulder muscles originate and where they insert at the base of the skull. They are going to replace these muscles with pneumatic pistons. We just need to hook up an air compressor and we can get this going. And measure the force of a killing blow. And with modern technology, we'll be able to observe this lightning-fast striking power. If it's running 30 miles an hour, how fast does it strike? Well, that's what we're going to find out. Probably not. Slow-mo cameras will allow us to slow time to a standstill. And Jeff Lieberman and Matt Kearney know exactly what to look for in that footage. However, it is one thing being armed with such a formidable weapon, but yet another being close enough to use it. North America, two million years ago. Just how did this master predator, this keen-eyed bird with killer instincts, get close to strike its prey? It's a solitary hunter. The slightest movement drives the bird into action. One of the most important things for any kind of a predator is motion. It's almost a hardwired trigger that when something moves, you chase it. And how a predator tracks prey is crucial information for understanding an extinct beast. But for the terror bird, this information is hard to come by. Unlike wolves or saber-tooths, terror bird has no immediate modern-day counterparts. Their closest living relatives are one one-hundredth of their size, raptors. And this is why paleontologist Eric Snively studies these small yet powerful birds to gain an insight into terror birds. They're really my chosen subjects for examining evolution and behavior and hunting in large predatory birds of the past. One of Eric's subjects is the hawk. Hawks can see a wider spectrum of color than humans can. Also, they have a much higher density of light-gathering cells on their retinas, so they can see a finer discrimination of movement. A hawk spots a squirrel long before its unsuspecting victim realizes it. Once the hawk dives, it's able to stay focused on its target no matter how fast it's moving. Could a terror bird also watch like a hawk? Larry Whitmer, professor of anatomy at Ohio University, has a way of getting inside a terror bird's head. He uses CAT scans to analyze fossils that are millions of years old. Here we've got the skull of a terror bird that we've made transparent so we can see what the brain structure is like. We can get a closer look by actually making the skull go away completely. And we can zoom right in on the brain. Okay, now we're into the eye side. The CAT scan generates an image of the soft tissues that were once encased in bone. Great, that's perfect. We can now view what the brain was like. We can see where blood vessels and nerves went. By being 
being able to view the brain, that allows us to, to, to have a glimpse into what the behavior and the capability of these animals actually were. Though a terror bird's brain is bigger, it has the same structure as that of a hawk. There's a part of the brain located right here called the optic lobes, where visual information is processed. For instance, in both cases, we can see that the optic lobes are very expanded, suggesting that vision was important. The scan reveals that raptors and terror birds also have something else in common. One thing that I'm really struck by is the large size of the cerebrum, the higher part of the brain. The seat of cognition and problem solving. Thus giving the terror bird a huge advantage during the hunt. A predator needs to solve the problems that the prey are presenting to it. To be wily. To be able to get around any of the defenses that the prey is offering. So the terror bird, or Titanus, is intelligent enough to plan an attack. Like, where is the prey relative to trees, and how am I going to try and capture that prey item? They would really be very good at scanning the horizon by looking out to the side and covering a very wide field of vision. This would have enabled Titanus to give itself a bit of an edge over the prey. But Titanus has another advantage. And the hunting behavior of another modern-day predatory bird, the owl, provides a clue. Oberon is a great horned owl. For Oberon, his sense of hearing is even more important than his sense of vision. Owls have an extraordinary adaptation for hearing the direction where sounds are coming from. They can localize the prey very well just through hearing. They don't need to rely on sight. This is understandable when one considers that owls hunt at night. Terror birds probably didn't hunt at night, but they too used their sense of hearing during the hunt. The sense of hearing is going to be associated with this part of the brain right in here, which is the lower part, the cochlea, which is very long and well-developed in these terror birds. What that suggests is that the hearing was important to terror birds. Potentially, they used it for, for tracking prey, listening for the sounds of, of prey in their environment. The CT scan suggests that the bird's ears would have functioned well in an environment where it could not see its prey. A terror bird's hearing enables it to identify prey through barely audible sounds. The kinds of sounds that actually transmit through forested and rough habitats. Historic state of the art seeing and hearing allows Terra Bird to find its prey. But the ability to chase it down is crucial. Imagine running for your life with one of these behind you. Terra Bird ran fast but straight into extinction, though not without a fight. And that fight was brutal. Terror Bird came to these battles armed with some secret weapons. And now, nearly two million years later, those secrets are about to be revealed.